See, if, if I confess, will they turn off the light? <laughs> but not even my glasses help. <clears throat> I'm sorry, if I don't, if I don't, if I will not be as interactive as I usually am, this is because uh, this is not the usual way to treat speakers here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, okay, I have <clears throat> several hats today that I will be wearing and um, I hope that you will forgive me if I will switch these without announcing which head I'm wearing because um, I was very fortunate that when I joined the automotive industry that I came at a time when software basically took over controls away from much of the hydraulic uh, controls in the uh, transmission domain. Um, lots of things in the simulation domain had to be adapted at the time and all of this um, I was basically just thrown into and uh, allowed to help along. So <clears throat> much of what I will present today is a, also a very personal view of um, what, ha what has happened during the last 15 years. And the pinnacle of this is at the moment FMI, um, FMI 2.0 as a release candidate. So now I need to find the page down button. Okay, I will start with um, a motivation specifically, specifically for controls development. Um, and I don't mean just PID control or tuning, I mean controls development as we know it in the automotive industry with hundreds of thousands of lines of C code and hundreds of thousands of parameters that need to be tuned. If you're facing such a mammoth task with hundreds of team members, a uh, collaborative platform is something that is essential. And if you don't have the right tools to move you along a task that ha takes hundreds of man years, will take hundreds of, man hundreds, of e hundreds of years. And so collaborative uh, work is the only way to actually paralyze this so that it will be done in three or four years. I will talk about the history of uh, Silver Modelica and FMI and how all, how all of this relates, including how uh, Qtronic is related in, in all of this. Um, Silver and FMI today and some applications. And here I will emphasize on how it has been used in the last years so that for you that are new to FMI, you will not leave this room without sort of the understanding that this is something that is stable and usable. It might not be as pretty and as um, extensive in feature set as we wanted, um, but we had to make uh, something that was workable in relatively short uh, period of time, and that's why some features had to be left out. We moved them to 2.0 to 2.1, um, but what we have with 1.0 is already something that is widely used and accepted and that's why I want to present some application examples. Um, many people have been speaking about FMI today and tomorrow I might have to uh, skip this and some conclusions. So from the controls perspective if you're developing in the automotive industry I want to add this um, if you're developing controls in automotive industry, you're faced with this exponential increase in, co increase in complexity. And your budget is not increasing exponentially. It's not even increasing linearly. And so the only way to deal with this uh, problem, we usually call it the test crisis, uh, if we want to make it very dramatic, um, good tools are the only way to move along. And since uh, we have been in the past uh, tied to tools, the only way away from the tie to tools is tie yourself to standards instead of tie yourself to tools. That's what, it's also one of the, the, the main themes that I want to push today. <clears throat> so parallelism in your work is something that is very important so that you can sort of get all your people as productive as possible. And that means also that you have to move away from hardware requirements because your hardware is also oftentimes a very restricted resource. 
So even if you have 100 engineers, if you have only one prototype or two, what will they be doing if you require a prototype to do testing? So virtualization is one of the key issues if you want to be more effective. So the traditional control software development in automotive industry is that you have a number of guys developing models and or hand code and or all kinds of different ways of building a control including all the parameters that tune it so that it does exactly what you want it to do. And then you cross compile it onto your controller platform and then you can use it in heel tests or on, on in your prototype. But as I said, that has limitations. And that's why this very old vision of actually moving this into the virtual world uh, is something that we have been betting our farm on, actually more than one farm on, um, because we believe that many, many, many of the development tasks that you are uh, forced to do can be moved into the, a virtual world where you're running your control, and I mean your control C code as you would cross-compile it here not a model or something, but I mean the real thing with EEPROM handling, with error codes and all, all, all of it, right? You move all of this onto your PC and you run it against the plant model. And this is the first time when I say, this is exactly where we were many years back when we interfaced with many, many tools and spent many years interfacing with them so that we could pull all these physical simulation models into our um, con control loop here. And <clears throat> today with Silver, what we do is we pull of these, we pull these simulation models in using FMI. So from a tool vendor's perspective, FMI is a great thing too, because we don't have to support all these bridges to all these other tools because we can simply ask our customers to push the other two vendors to support FMI. And this is the end user's view of what such a virtual car looks like. He finds all the dashboard elements that they're used to, and the engineers don't even need to know what is driving the plant model in the back. They will just use some simple controls and do their testing here. Now let me give you a little bit of history. In 98, um, a completely different way of control was sort of envisioned at Daimler, um, of which I was part at the time, to move uh, control algorithms into software more heavily than they had done before. And so this was the basically the first time when we saw an in-house tool called Backbone to actually do software in the loop using plant models and control code. In 2002, uh, the group I was part of uh, evaluated Daimola and because of that evaluation um, sort of giving us high hopes that this would be the way to go forward, we ported all our transmission models to Modelica. 2006, um, the Daimler research and development uh, team that I was part of spun off Qtronic. I was one of the guys who left Daimler at the time. And we built <coughs> a commercial version of this in-house tool backbone, which is called Silver. And in 2010, shortly after the release of the standard, we started supporting the FMI standard. And in 2011, so this is three years ago, um, almost all of the plant models back then and today all of the plant models um, that are developed for the uh, transmission control development and transmission CAA are all shared and distributed using FMI technology. So we have years and years of experience and had years and years of fixing all the small and little uh, 30 bugs that we had in our implementation and in the standard with the SO system and all the other FMI supporting companies.
Today, more than half of our customers are using FMI technology. So <clears throat> not all of them, unfortunately. Some are still stuck uh, with big tools that do not natively support FMI. Uh, in Silver, however, and I won't go through all the details here, but you see that we have virtual ECU support, we have plant support here. Let me face on where we are touched by the FMI technology. First of all, when we import plant models, this is of course the prime domain of FMI. This is where Silver, of course, makes use of that. We do import um, from Autosar or in, with Autosar developed uh, control code um, using the Autosar builder specific target that creates an FMU. And this FMU supports all kinds of very specific um, automotive standards as there are XCP calibration protocols and, and CAN and all, of, all these other things. But we want to play nice also. We don't want to just gobble up what everyone else is creating inside of Silver. We also export FMUs because we do recognize that some of our customers do their development tasks in other platforms. So what we do is we, we export also our virtual ECUs as FMUs and we will soon also export our tricore chip emulation as FMUs. Let me talk about some of the applications. Um, you will all yes, you will all get they will all get the slides, right? Yes. So I will skip through some of the details, but let me repeat. For years now, Daimler has been using FMI technology to share plant models for all kinds of different transmission and, and powertrain applications. We will, in the next quarter of uh, two, or the first quarter of two, uh, 2014, export all our, I mean, this is a dirty hack when you don't have the C code from your tier one supplier. Like if you're running a Bosch ECU, you want to virtualize that, they won't give you the C code. We have a solution for this. And we have a solution, we will have a solution soon that you can't just run it in Silver and Simulink, but you will be able to run it in any F FMU supporting uh, uh, tool. <clears throat> now I will switch heads uh, a bit because uh, FMI is dear to me. And the maturity is one of those things that sometimes keep people from using it and committing to it. So. <clears throat> as FMI was the result of a very, very fast-paced, um, incredibly productive European project, Model SR, um, some things had to be left out. So additional requirements have been created since we released 1.0. And believe us, we are listening to our customers, we, the FMI community. So FMI 2.0 is the answer to many of your questions. Can we have certain other features in the FMI standard? And the other initial problems that we had was incompatibilities between the FMI implementations. That was very frustrating for some of the customers who committed very early on. And we have been working really, really hard uh, in the cross-check activities that <clears throat> I'm trying to shepherd a bit. Um, are the answer to this. We're trying really hard to proactively work on the quality side of the standard and the implementation. But we need your involvement because it's not good enough if you're just sitting there and you're frustrated. You need to talk to us. So please get involved. Uh, check out the website. It tells you exactly how to um, sort of get the knowledge of the FMI standard, uh, get examples. There's an FM, FMU SDK out there that you can use to sort of try and toy around with it. Lots and lots of uh, example FMUs exported from the different tools that you can test. <clears throat> For some of these conclusions that have been mentioned, I want to stress again what FMI 
uh, brings for embedded software development. Maybe this is a unique view, but the conclusions are very much the same. As we share compiled models, we share without IP. Very important if you talk about cross-company sharing between suppliers and OEMs. Um, because it is very, very time-consuming to create high-quality models. Um, and it also requires special purpose licenses and modeling tools. Uh, now you don't need as many modeling uh, license or tool licenses for this kind of modeling because people can reuse FMI um, transported technology uh, with less training and be more productive because of it. And I think this is what we need in order to tilt the cost benefit uh, for simulation technology that has been sometimes put in question, right? Everyone knows how important it is to have simulation, but when your boss asks you why you need two more million uh, euros for a certain simulation project, uh, then you're oftentimes uh, looking for arguments. But if you pull down that number because the cost has been reduced dramatically because you can share out uh, this work of the few exports that you have among more users, and this is really what, what your bosses want to hear. So this is the key technology to delivering great simulation technology, technology to others. Thank you.